teen suicide rate's gone crazy. I think in the last few hundred years, the Christians have not done a good job of answering this evolution theory, and we've allowed this philosophy of evolution, actually it's a religion, we've allowed this religion to take over our school system, our legal system, our whole thinking process now is based on a philosophy which has zero scientific evidence. None. We've been offering a quarter million dollars for anybody with any real scientific ev evidence for evolution. That offer's been out there about 12 years now. There is no evidence for it whatsoever. People believe in it, I understand, but that doesn't make it science. Now, there are three things to try to accomplish in my seminar. Number one, I want to strengthen your faith in the Word of God. Number two, if you're not saved, I want to try to get you converted. I'll tell you right up front, I'm after you, okay? I'm not sneaking up on you. I'm after you, all right? <laughs> Notice what the textbook says. 30 million years ago. Now, kids, let me translate that for you. Anytime a textbook says millions of years ago, what it means is long ago and far away. It means a fairy tale is coming next, okay? That's your warning, fairy tale coming up. 30 million years ago, these critters evolved. Ooh, there's that word again. You've got to watch that one. It says they're ancestral to both humans and modern apes. Ancestors to humans? Grandpa? What big eyes you have, Grandpa. <laughs> uh, the better to see you with, my boy. You know, we've been teaching kids they're nothing but an animal, and today a lot of them act like animals. Even Barbara Reynolds figured it out. She said, your kids go ape in school? Here's why. He's being taught evolution. Guess what, Johnny? You're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. <laughs> you mean I'm just an animal? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you ever stopped and thought that possibly what we're teaching the kids is maybe affecting how they behave? Hmm? What you believe determines how you behave. Kids are taught today, you know, that you're just an animal. The rock music these days is all full of death and destruction and blood. Well, the Bible says, they that hate me love death. Kids are taught today there are no absolutes. I was in a debate one time and this professor said, Hoven, there are no absolutes. I said, are you absolutely sure? <laughs> blew his little brain. Now hold on a minute. How can I be absolutely sure? There's no absolutes. I was speaking in a public school in Pennsylvania a couple years ago, and this kid sat on the second row, and he said, Hovind, I'm an atheist. There's no God. I said, are you sure? He said, I'm sure. I said, well, let me ask you a question, son. I said, do you know everything? He said, oh, no, no. I said, okay, well, good. I said, do you think maybe you know half of everything? He said, no. I said, okay, well, let's just pretend for a few minutes that you know half of everything. Would it be possible then for God to exist in the other half you don't know? Brand new thought rattled around in his brain for a while. Got lost, I'm sure. I said, by the way, son, if you're an atheist, let me ask you a simple question. How do you tell right from wrong? Ask an atheist that question sometime. How do you tell right from wrong? He said, that's easy. I decide what's right and wrong. He said, I'm the God of my own universe. I said, I'm glad to hear about that, son, because I am going to shoot you in five minutes. He said, you can't do that. I said, oh, yeah, I can. You see, I am the God of my own universe, and I decided it's fine for me to shoot you. You see where that logic would lead in a hurry? If every man did that which was right in his own eyes, like the book of Judges says, Serious problems for society, big time. How do you tell right from wrong? Simple question to ask an evolutionist. They don't have a way to tell. I mean, maybe, maybe Osama bin Laden should decide right from wrong. Huh? Maybe Bill Clinton should decide right from wrong. If he has any idea where to find it. I mean, how do you tell right from wrong? Simple. It's real easy to tell right from wrong. Thus saith the Lord. Now see, that is absolute. And the Lord said, He shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Some people either don't know what God says, or maybe they just don't care what God says. But God says, don't do that, okay? <laughs> now, if you did it in the past, okay, say, God, I'm sorry, that was dumb, and don't do it again, all right? A lot of teachers don't seem to understand. They just blindly follow the textbook and think they have to teach this evolution theory. No, you don't have to teach this evolution theory, okay? Teachers can teach creation in public schools if they want. The court struck it down in both cases. They said you cannot require that creation be taught. 
They said the teachers can teach it if they want, but it has to be voluntary on the teacher's part. Even Stephen Gould said, no statute exists in any state to bar instruction in creation science. It could be taught before and it can be taught now. He was commenting on the 1987 Supreme Court decision. What's happened though, the ACLU, the American Communist Lawyers Union, they have tried really hard to spread the propaganda around that you cannot talk about creation in the public schools, and that's just simply not true. It's always been perfectly fine to teach creation in the public schools. There's never been a law against that at all, okay? But if a teacher gets up in front of their class and the teacher says, okay, kid, listen, listen, you started off like a slime and you slowly evolved to a human. You don't need to be a genius to figure out that teaching is going to destroy some kid's faith in the Bible. And anybody that destroys a child's faith better read what Jesus said about that. He said, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Anybody that teaches evolution is in trouble when they stand before God. The Bible says, be not many masters, knowing we shall receive the greater condemnation. It's interesting, though, what happened. Back in the 1950s, the average textbook in America had very little evolution. Two or three thousand words was all. 1957, the Russians beat us in the space race by launching Sputnik, and Americans panicked. How many of you are old enough to remember the panic in America when the Russians were winning the space race? I mean, they had articles in Life magazine, how you can survive fallout. They said the Soviets are ahead of us in science because the Soviets teach evolution. We don't teach it in our schools. I mean, they had articles on how to build your own bomb shelter. People were building them in their backyard, okay, to survive nuclear fallout. Wait a minute. The Soviets are ahead in science because they teach evolution. What does evolution have to do with putting up a satellite? Well, then, in 1959, it was the 100-year anniversary of Darwin's book coming out. And in 1959, Eisenhower asked Congress for a billion dollars to push more evolution into the school system. And he got it. American textbooks were rewritten in the late 50s and early 60s to include more evolution. They called it the Cold War Reconstruction of American Science Education. Our whole science curriculum and other curriculums were rewritten to make sure evolution was taught. And by 1963, the average textbook had 33,000 words about evolution. By 1963, prayer was taken out of our school system. Anybody remember that? Madeline Murray O'Hare? By 1963, we started to see a great rise in premarital sex for every single age bracket. We saw a great rise in uh, sexually transmitted diseases for 10 to 14 year olds. We saw a great rise in unwed birth rates, a 550% increase in pregnancies. The difference is being aborted. Now, one third of all the kids born at the hospital are born to a couple that are not married, illegitimate children. A third of them. Now listen carefully. If you are one of those, this is for you. Timothy was a half-breed that never should have been born. Timothy's mommy was Jewish. His daddy was Greek. The Jews weren't supposed to marry anybody but Jews. Mama disobeyed. Timothy's the result. But he wanted to serve God, and God said, I'll take you, son. He wrote two books in your Bible. So if your parents messed up, you shut your mouth and quit your whining, and then you go serve God with your life, okay? There's no excuses. God will use anybody, okay? The number of unmarried couples living together has increased radically since 1963. God's word hasn't changed. He said, thou shalt not commit adultery. He said, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Jesus said, if you even look and lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. By the way, ladies, that's why it's important how you dress, okay? My daddy always said, if you're not in business, don't advertise. Okay. Divorce rates have gone crazy in this country. Child abuse is up 2,300%. Illegal drug use up 6,000%. Violent crimes nearly a 1,000% increase. I'm not that old, you know, but I remember the days when you did not have to lock your house. Anybody remember those days? And you left the keys in the ignition all the time. You never took them out because you might lose them. And you go to the average high school and half the pickup trucks in the parking lot had a loaded rifle hanging in the back window. And nobody got shot in school in those days, did they? You probably didn't hear about this, but the kids at Columbine High School that shot everybody, you know, were very strong believers in evolution. They did the shooting on Hitler's birthday on purpose. They shot Isaiah Scholes just because he was black. Hitler hated black people, so so did they. 
This was evolution-motivated shooting. And right after the shooting, Rosie O'Donnell got on her TV program and said, See, we need more gun control. Uh, Rosie, those kids broke 18 gun laws going into that school. I don't think two more gun laws would have slowed them down. See, Rosie can't figure it out. But one guy figured out the whole thing and put it on the spare tire cover on his van. I saw that. I said, man, I have got to get a picture of this. This explains everything. He said, blaming guns for Columbine is like blaming spoons for Rosie O'Donnell being fat. <laughs> it's not the spoon's fault, Rosie, okay? <laughs> and it's not the gun's fault either. Yeah, blame the gun. That's brilliant. SAT scores have plummeted since 1963. Twice in the last 40 years, they have dumbed down the test. They made the test dumber. So the scores would go back up. Teen suicide rate's gone crazy. Now look, if I told you if you kissed a frog, it would turn to a prince. You say, no, frogs don't turn to princes. How many of you ladies got your husband by kissing a frog? Come on, let's see. Looks like only about three, okay? See, it doesn't happen very often, but in the textbooks it does. We started off like an amoeba and slowly evolved to a frog and very slowly became a prince. <laughs> it's the same fairy tale. See, if the frog turns to the prince quickly, we all know it's a fairy tale. But if the frog turns to the prince slowly, oh, no, that's modern science. No, I'm sorry, that's still a fairy tale, okay? Even more of a fairy tale. The difference, though, is not a kiss. That won't do it anymore. Today, boys and girls, if you want to turn your frog to a prince, you have to have a super-duper special high-powered magic ingredient called billions and billions of years. How many have ever heard that before? Billions of years ago. It's in all the textbooks. It's on TV. It's in the magazines. It's in National Pornographic. A geographic, I mean, billions and billions of years ago. They talk about a, some, like a, some kind of fact of science, you know. Here's a fourth grade textbook. It says, many millions of years ago. Now, wait a minute. If anybody ever says that to me, I say, uh, excuse me, were you there? I'll say, no, of course I wasn't there. And I'll say, now, do you know the earth is millions of years old? I mean, is this really part of science? Is this something we can observe and study and test and demonstrate? Much more important, though, than knowing all the truth and facts about science is to know the truth about whether you're going to heaven or not. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, let me explain quickly what you need to do to go to heaven. The Bible says we're all sinners. We've all broken God's laws. We've disobeyed the Creator. We've, we've done wicked things. We're sinners. Some are worse than others, at least in man's eyes, but we've all broken God's laws. And the Bible says you have to repent. The word repent means to turn. It actually means two things, to turn from your sin and to turn to God. God's looking for a change in your attitude where you say, Lord, I don't want to do wrong anymore. I'm sorry, I've offended you. I want to do right. And you turn from sin and you turn to God and say, God, would you please forgive me? Would you save me? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You need to admit you're a sinner. Number two, the Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. We deserve to die and go to hell because of our sin. But Jesus died for you. He loves you. He wants you to come to heaven. And anybody that will ask him for the free salvation, God will give you the gift of eternal life, it says in Romans 6.23. It's a free gift. And it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you would just call and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, would you please forgive me? And ask him. He will give you that free gift of eternal life. Why don't you just pray with me right now, and you could receive Christ as your Savior. There's no magic words. God's looking at your heart. But if you could say this and mean it, God would forgive you. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please apply your blood to my account. And forgive my sins and take me to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, if you call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. So if you've asked the Lord to save you, He promised He'd save you. Now your job is to grow. Read your Bible, pray, get involved in a good Bible-believing church, and begin to grow to be a good Christian.